are on sign number three tonight. And, uh, um, and this is um, just a really great healing of, uh, of, this, uh, of, a, of a man at the pool of Bethesda. Real quick on healing. Have you guys noticed just recently, um, in the last few years, all of these healing products that have been kind of coming out lately? Like, um, I was at the coffee shop today, or at a coffee shop today, and, and I got like a probiotic drink. And it was like, man, I don't remember those kind of growing up, like probiotic stuff that was coming out. Um, that I went to go visit my sister up in Seattle, and she was telling me about this thing called elderberry. She's like, do you take elderberry? I'm like, no, I'm not like a witch, so I don't take elderberry. No, what, what is elderberry? elderberry and she's like it's this thing to help like your immune system and all this stuff and I'm like I've, I've never heard of that that's so weird but uh, I'll try it you know and uh, and then the, all these other things like essential oils how many of you guys are essential oil people you can come on this is a support group for essential oil people we can be honest in here this not a lot of people tonight it's okay Essential oils, like for me, I'm a little skeptical on it. I think that there's probably a big, you know, need for them. And I'm, so I'm not denying it. But, you know, I had a stomach ache years ago. And someone was like, here, take this like little dot of peppermint and it'll make it go away. And I'm like, it's like in my hand, like, Phew. That's not going to do anything. Like, it's so small, so tiny. What are you talking about, you know? All these different things that are on, on healing and stuff like that. I find it really interesting, though, that the people that are so concerned about not getting sick are the ones that normally get sick all the time. Have you ever noticed that? I've noticed like the people that are always like taking things, that all these vitamin C stuff and emergencies and airborns and all these different things are like the ones that you like want to stay away from the most because they just keep getting sick. So I think I'm going to venture, this is how I live my life, is that um, I think germs are attracted to fear, honestly. I think that, I think that it's that the people that are not afraid of getting sick are the people that don't get sick. It's not necessarily about me catching a cold. It's really, can the cold catch me? And the answer is no. Like, I can, I'll, touch, I'll shake your hand. I'll give you a hug, all those kind of things. It's not like the germ, I feel like just germaphobes get sick all the time. I don't know. That's just me. Um, but it's just really interesting how um, we go through these cycles of, of trying to keep ourselves better, right? Trying to get, to, to heal ourselves or to, you know, prevent these sicknesses and things like that. And we find uh, this this guy in John chapter 5 in the same situation. He's been struggling with a sickness, with an infirmity for 38 years. 38 years. That's a long time to be struggling with something. Something that is life debilitating. Like something that has just been taking control over his life. And he's trying to find anything. Anything that can, that can take it away. Anything that would heal him from this. He's trying to find, man, whatever it is, I just need to go to this thing to get this healing. And so we find, we'll pick up our story in John chapter 5, verse 1. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. And when Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? So we, we pick up our story of this guy waiting for, there, there's this this um, this place called Bethesda, this pool called Bethesda, that all of these people that are sick, they would gather towards um, and gather to, to, this, to this place. And we don't really know, like, uh, th th there's not really a full definitive answer if this was, like, a real healing that would take place with the angel stirring up the water, if this is a, a real, like, story, or if this is just a real urban legend for, for them and things like that. But the fact is, is that everybody gathered for this purpose around this pool. They gathered for this healing. They believed that there, this, this, these waters were healing waters. And at a certain point, the healing would come. At a certain point, the healing would come for these people. 
And so we find our, this gentleman, we find this guy who has been sick, who has, been, has, this, has this disease, has been struggling with it, and he's just searching, and he wants to get down to this water. He wants to get down to this water, but there's so many people there that whoever gets in first, after whatever the stirring is, that's the person who gets healed. Well, he, he, can't, he can't seem to get there. Uh, you know, um, real quick, j- just to let you guys know, if you ever go to Israel with us, this is one of those um, X, marks, X marks the spot place. Places in Israel, you can actually go to the Pool of Bethesda. It's really cool. I've been there a few times, and there's a really cool church there that has the best acoustics in the entire world. I, I've sang in it a, a bunch of times, and it is just like the one of the one of the coolest experiences in Israel. But you get to go to this area where people people went and gathered right here where Jesus went to, to heal this man. This guy was coming to this place looking for a healing, looking for anything looking for this healing to to take away this infirmity from his life, waiting with all of these people. We don't even know how long he's been there. Maybe he's been there for years. He's been waiting here, just waiting for his moment, waiting for his moment to be healed. And some man comes up to him and says, do you want to be made well? Well, obviously the answer is yes, I want to be made well. I've been waiting here. This is why I'm here. So the sick man in verse 7 answered him and says, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I'm coming, another steps down before me. And so the sick man's like, look, I, I've tried. I've tried to do that, Jesus. Like, it, it, I'm not stupid. I'm trying to do this. I know that this is going to bring healing, but I just can't get to it. So each and every day, I'm just waiting. I'm waiting for the opportunity to do it. So yes, I would love to be made to, to be healed, but I can't. Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed, and walked. Wow, the moment he's been waiting for. And what an interesting way. It wasn't, well, go down at a different time to, this, to the water. It wasn't, well, let me get the water for you and I'll bring it up. Or let me bring you down to the water. He, he calls him to do something. Rise, take up your bed, and walk. And immediately, you can underline that. I have it underlined in my Bible. Immediately the man was made well, took up his bed, and walked. And that day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said to him who was cured, it is the Sabbath. It's not lawful for you to carry your bed. Uh, crazy. <laughs> you can't be healed on the Sabbath. That's, that's blasphemy. Uh, he answered them, he who made me well said to me, take up your bed and walk. Then they asked him, who is this man who said to you, take up your bed and walk? But the one who was healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had withdrawn a, a multitude being in that place. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus who made him well. I think about this this guy, and I, I try to put myself in his shoes. I'm trying to put myself in just to imagine the moment, like, um, I think sometimes we forget that the, these, these are not just stories, that this really happened, that this is a real, something really historical, this really happened to this man. Sometimes we can read that and go, okay, wow, like, um, yes, someone got healed, next story, what's, what's next? But think about that, struggling with something for 38 years. You might be in this room struggling with something for the last 38 days, and it seems like it's 38 years. It's been excruciating. You've been like, God, what, whenever you want to answer this question, I'm all ears. God, whenever you want to take away this infirmity, I'm all ears. I'm waiting for you. I'm just waiting. God, would you do this? Maybe you are coming here tonight and you're just like, I've tried everything else. I've tried the essential oils and the probiotics. I've tried everything. And for some reason, I'm stuck in the same place. So you know what? Someone invited me or I heard about church and I thought, I'm just going to try it out. And waiting, waiting for this moment. I think about not just being the, the person, this man that has been struggling for 38 years, but I think about all of the multitudes that were waiting with him. And I think, man, what were you waiting for? This man, Jesus, who has already shown himself before, he's already shown his healing power. He's already shown his his power in such crazy ways already before. He's got this reputation. He's there, and yet everybody is waiting for the wrong thing. Everybody is waiting for the wrong thing. How many times do we find ourselves in the same place where we're waiting for the wrong thing? 
We're waiting for the next politician to bring the answers. We're waiting for the next product to come out. We're waiting for the next thing to fulfill our greatest desire. What are we waiting for when Christ is right there saying, do you want to be made well? He's there knocking on the door of your heart saying, I'm right here. Do you want to be made well? Maybe it's a spiritual healing that you need. Maybe it's something that you've just been searching for the right answer. God, I don't know what the answer, I don't know what my life's purpose is. I don't know what my hope is. I don't have any hope. What is my life? Why am I even here? And you've been searching and searching and going to and waiting for the answer, going to this book or that book or this uh, mentor or that person, this doctor or whatever. And you're waiting and waiting and God is saying right to you right now. He's whispering to you right now, knocking on the door of your heart. Do you want to be made well? Man, what are we waiting for? And why does it take so long for us? Why does it take so long for me to finally go, God, just, just do it. <laughs> just take, take me. Take all of me. I'm tired of, of doing this. I, I just give up, and I want you to take control over my life. Man, I wonder, I wonder like, why it takes for me so long to, to finally do this. Man, I'm thinking about him. If he had the moment be, before the 38 years, would he have taken that moment? Before this moment right here with Christ, would he have taken that moment? And I think for us, like how often do we, do we struggle with the same thing, battle with the same things, and, and, are, and are continually coming up just empty or coming up just, just failing? And it's like, man, how long is it going to take before you lift up your head and realize Christ is right there? He's right there waiting to make you well. Right there ready to make you well. You know, I think about... Sometimes when I'm walking away from the Lord, and, and it can be this like slow progression, but it will take so long that, um, have you ever gotten to this place where you, you, you are um, uh, compromise after compromise, things you said you'd never do, you end up doing, and you just find yourself compromising so many different things to where you look back, you stop for a second, you look back and you think, man, how did I get here? How did I even get here? What am I doing with my life? Why do I keep doing these things? Why do I keep messing up like this? And man, I, I, I don't want to get to that place. I hate getting to that place. When Jesus is saying all along, do you want to be made well? Jesus is saying that to you right now. He's calling you to that right now. Do you want to be made well? What are we waiting for? Jesus is always there to heal us. Spiritually, physically, he's there to heal us. He's there to make us new. He's there to give us the strength to get up and walk. You know, sometimes healing takes a step of faith. Sometimes, like, we're just hoping for kind of the matrix feeling of, like, getting the plug into the back of our head and, like, I know kung fu all of a sudden. And, all, and we're praying for patience, and all of a sudden we just get this magical sprinkle on us, and we just, oh, I'm now more patient. We pray, God, I, I, need, I need your strength for this, and we just feel like he's going to just, like, sprinkle this strength. But sometimes the healing takes a step of faith. It wasn't like all of a sudden he was like, you know, um, do you want to be made well? And he said yes, and all of a sudden he just started floating. And like the glow beam of light like comes on him and he starts floating into like all around everybody. He's like, oh my gosh, this, look at this, Superman, or something like that. It wasn't anything like that. It, what, it's so interesting, the response from Jesus. Someone who has been waiting for so long to be healed and he says, rise, take up your bed and walk. Rise, take up your bed and walk. I wonder how many of us are missing out on the healing because we're too afraid to take the step of faith. I wonder how many of us are too afraid to take the step of faith so we're missing out on the great healing that Christ can bring to us. Man, God, I want to be more patient. God, please help me to be more patient. And so he says, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to show patience and I'm going to give you the strength to do it. But we're like, I, I just don't want to be patient in that moment. I just, I don't want to be patient with that person. Can you not bring that person my way? Like, I love patience, but not with them. They don't deserve it um, or something like that. Or maybe it's, God, I just want to be used by you. I want to, I want to go deeper in my walk with you. I want to see you do something impossible through my life. 
So he says, great, I want you to go to this place. And you're like, not that impossible. Like, I'm thinking something else, you know. Like, I'm thinking something in my comfort zone. You know, can you, can you do something, the impossible in the comfort zone? Because uh, that would really help me out. But he says, no, take the step of faith. Rise, take up your bed, and walk. I wonder how many times... He might be calling you to a physical healing, and he's calling you, I need you to go and share what you're, what you're struggling with. Go and share to your pastor or to your friends or to your family what you're struggling with so that I can heal you, so that I can take this away from you. But so many of us are, I need to just keep it to myself. I don't want people to know that, I, that I'm weak. I don't want people to know that I'm struggling. I don't want people to know what I'm really going through in my life. And we miss out on the miracle of God because of our lack of faith, because of our fear, because we think, no, that, that's, that's for like the, 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 the greater Christians, you know, that's for like the more Christianer people. And, uh, you know, like that's, that, that's, not, that's not really what I signed up for. I signed up for like the genie in the bottle that just grants me my three wishes, But sometimes God says, man, I need you to rise, take up your bed and walk, and I will show the miracle that I've been wanting to do through in and through your life all along. What is that step of faith for you? What is God calling you to do? Maybe you have been asking for so long. You've been saying it for so long, asking and asking and asking. And you feel, I feel like there's someone in this room right now that feels exactly what God is telling them to do, that step of faith, the rise, take up your bed and walk, but just fear is gripping you. And I want to tell you, man, it is so great when we finally just take that step. He's trustworthy. He's there to catch us, even if you fall. Like the the worst case scenario for you is that you fail. But guess what? Christ is gonna be there to pick you right back up. You know, I remember when I was, when I was growing up and, and uh, wanting to learn how to swim. Rem- you might have been in the same place and your, your dad or your mom or some kind of, uh, you know, par- parental figure was teaching you to swim. And you had those little floaties on your arms, you know, and, and, the, and the inner tube. And you were kind of afraid of the water and stuff like that. But for the moment that that person you trusted got into the pool and said, jump. Man, you knew that you were going to, you're, they were going to catch you. You know, so the floaties are off, you know, the inner tube is off, and you're just, you know, like, no, you just trust them. You trust, I trusted my dad. I'm like, I'm here, you know, catch me. And my dad would catch me every time, and sometimes he'd take a little bit of a step back, try it again. And I'm like, Whoa. You know, I feel like I'm jumping at 100 yards, you know, and he'd catch me again. And sometimes it was a little bit farther back, and I'd jump, and I'd fall in the water, And maybe he didn't catch me all the way, but guess what? He picked me right back up. And I knew he was there every single time. I knew he was there every single time. And man, God is there to pick you up. He's there to catch you. Take that leap of faith. and, And let me just say this. It's not a blind leap of faith. It's not, I don't really like that phrase, a blind leap, a leap of faith, because it kind of carries this connotation of like, I don't really know if he's gonna be there. Right? I feel like the blind leap of faith, I, I get the concept. The concept really is, is that you don't see what's ahead. Right? But the thing that we have in our faith is that we have a substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things unseen, as Hebrews uh, talks about in chapter 11. The substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things unseen. So I may not know what I'm jumping towards, but I know Christ is going to be there. I may not know what step of faith or the things, the troubles or the, the, the water I might kind of fall into that I might be like, oh man, I, is he really there? But guess what? I have the evidence and I have the substance of things hoped for that he is going to be there to pick me up every time. He's going to be there to, 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 to make sure that I don't drown, to make sure that I'm not going to fall too far, to make sure that I, my head is above water. God is there when you take that leap of faith. He's there. He's going to be there. He's not just there in the victories, but even in the weaknesses, even in the failures, even if you fall, if you take a step of faith and you fall, he's there. The worst case scenario when you take a step of faith is that you fail, and guess what? Christ is going to be there in that failure, and he's going to pick you right back up. Proverbs talks about a righteous man who falls seven times, but he gets back up. And, and so maybe the healing 
Maybe the healing that is trying to take place, it, it requires a step of faith, requires you to do something and to trust God. And my encouragement to that person here tonight is to, to just trust him. Trust him. He's never let you down before. I think about even in, in Romans chapter 5 when, when it says to, to glory in, in tribulations. Why? Because it produces perseverance. It produces long-suffering. It, produ it produces perseverance. And that, produ that perseverance produces um, character. And that character produces what? You guys remember Romans chapter 5? It produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character. It's a four-letter word. It starts with H and it, rhymes, or and it ends with hope. Hope. That it produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. Hope in what? That God's going to be there in the next tribulation. You can, you can have patience in that tribulation, in that weakness, when you fall down in that failure because he's there with you. He's there for you. He's going to pick you back up and he's producing good character in your, in your life. That, you're, that godly character that you've been wanting for so long, he produces that good godly character. But then at the end of the day, he produces hope. You can now hope in him. He's going to be there every time. He's going to be there. There's evidence of it. When you take that step of faith, there's evidence that he is going to be there when you fall. So sometimes that healing takes a step of faith. And sometimes, honestly, um, you know, as you are seeing the work of God in your own life, I love the response of this man. After he takes up his bed and walks, you know, all the different people are like, what the heck? I, I, I saw this guy. What, you know, what, what is going on? I saw you. I saw you waiting. Like, and now you're healed. One, it's a Sabbath. I don't know if that's right. Like, what's going on? And, he, and there was just a simple story from this guy. The simple story is like, I, I don't really know. Just some dude told me to rise, stick up my bed and walked. And so I listened. I listened and it, and it happened. And then when he went and talked to Jesus, it, go, it, it says at the end of that, that portion of scripture that he goes out and he tells each of those people, it was Jesus. Jesus was the one that did it for me. It was such a simple story. And maybe that source of healing that God is trying to bring to people that are hurting, to people that need that healing, maybe God is trying to use you. Maybe God is trying to use you as that source of encouragement or hope or healing to a friend or a family member or a coworker that is just going through it. And that step of faith for you is to go and to be that source of hope for them, to be that source of healing to, to, uh, to, to them, to be able to say, man, I know who can heal you because he healed me. I know who can heal you. I know I struggled for so long in my life. Let me tell you my story. I struggled for so long in, in, in my life with this. I battled with this. I, maybe you, whatever your story is, but man, God healed me. He told me to take up my bed and walk, and guess what? That's exactly what I did. I got up when I thought I couldn't. I did the impossible because God made it possible for me. Everything that I thought was, was, was for naught, like everything that I thought was just coming to, uh, just crumbling before me, God brought life into my life again. He brought hope into my life again. He, he brought meaning to my life again. Christ healed me, and guess what? He can heal you. Like put aside all of the different, the different arguments of science and apologetics and things like that like put that aside for a second and simply just do what Christ what what um, this man did when Christ healed him and he just said man it was Jesus Jesus healed me and sometimes it's just the simplicity of that he healed me and he can heal you too he changed my life and he can change your life as well it's so simple. But the real question that I want to close with tonight, the real question is, do we, do we actually believe that Jesus can heal us? Do we actually believe that Jesus can heal us? Because I think, like, rhetorically, the answer is yes, right? Like, we all are like, yes and amen. That's why we came to church tonight. So thanks a lot for asking that question, Pastor. Um, like, yeah, I know that he can heal me. But sometimes we walk, like, contradictory to that. And sometimes we walk going, well, I, I, you know, I don't know if he wants to do it for me. Yes, he healed this person. Yes, he did that in this person's life. But I don't know if he wants to heal me. 
I don't even know if he really does that anymore. Maybe you're here thinking like, I've never even seen that. I've only read about it. I've only heard about it, but I've never seen it in, in, in life before. I've never seen Christ heal somebody? Does he still actually heal people physically? Do people come to, 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 uh, to the Lord and say, or to a pastor or whatever, and say, hey, I'm struggling with cancer, and I, I'm terminally ill, and has Christ healed people from cancer from, and, and healed somebody from their infirmity that they've been struggling with for 38 years? The answer is yes. He has done that. He still is doing that. You know, I have friends that have, have gone to the doctor, and the doctor said, you have this amount of time to live. You are terminally ill. You are going to die. And they go, they get prayer, they get anointed with oil, they pray that, God, I trust that you're going to heal me. They just get that word from the Lord. They go back, and that infirmity is gone. And, and that cancer is gone. The life-threatening disease is gone, and they've been healed. Do we still believe that Christ can heal people today? I want to give you a few scriptures to, to think about here tonight. Because I, I think that sometimes, you know, I think that sometimes in the, in the conservative realm of, of church that we miss out, I think, sometimes on the healing because we're such, uh, we, we, we don't want to, like, get too crazy, you know, sometimes. And we're like, we don't want to, like, get too Pentecostal or something like that. And we're like, you know, we got to tone it down and really, and really focus on the truth. And I think sometimes we miss out on these miracles, Right, like we're singing about that tonight, way maker, miracle worker. If we don't believe it, we shouldn't be singing it. If we don't believe it, we shouldn't be singing it. That's the point of these worship songs is that we're declaring what our heart believes. He is the way maker. He makes a way for anybody. So if you need a spiritual healing in your life, he is the way maker for you. Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. He is the way maker. He has made a way for you to be spiritually healed. He is the miracle worker. He has made a way for you to be physically healed. Every single one of you who put your trust and faith in Jesus will be physically healed. Let me tell you that real quick. And, and let me explain what I mean by that. Because some of you are like me who have a story of, of God maybe not coming through in the way that you thought he was going to come through with a spiritual healing. A little bit of a background of my story. My mom, when I was 11 years old, was diagnosed with colon cancer. She was 34 years old, and was, she went in with a stomach ache. Um, and my, my mom served on staff at a, as a secretary at a church. My dad's a pastor ever since I can remember. I'm a PK, pastor's kid, so I've got my issues. And, uh, but when, we, um, when she went into the, the hospital, she went into um, to the ER with a really bad stomach ache. They started doing all these tests. And they found out in that, in that time, as she went in with a stomach ache that she had for two weeks, that she had two months to live. Imagine that, going in with a stomach ache, leaving with two months to live. And my mom lived for two months, and she passed away and went home to be with the Lord when I was 11 years old on June, uh, June 1999. And I remember the countless prayers that I prayed, God, heal my mom. God, please, would you heal her? We're like a church family. <laughs> you know, we like serve at church. My dad's a pastor. She works on staff. Like this shouldn't happen to us. We're like good people, Lord. Like we need you to, to come through. God, we, and I can't, re, I can't even tell you how many prayers is we believe it. And I believed it with all of my heart that God could heal my mom. And yet for some reason in that moment, he didn't come through it the way I thought he did, the way I thought he would. And I think that the, the reality is that some of those things for us that can taint us with, well, maybe he's not the miracle worker anymore. But the reality is, is that my mom did get healed. My mom got healed in the life to come that she is with Jesus Christ right now. That she got that physical healing that each and every one of us will get one day. Because guess what? Each and every one of us, even if we get healed in this lifetime, we're going to come to the end of our life and we're going to pass away one day. Our lives are going to end one day, but Christ promised a physical healing that will happen and that you will rise like he rose from the dead. You will rise from the dead just as Christ rose from the dead. 
And so there is a physical healing that God will do in each and every person's life who puts their trust and faith in Jesus. But guess what? There are also physical healings. Why do they happen to some people and not to others? I have no idea. I've been serving the Lord for a long time of my life, and I still don't have the answer to that. But honestly, we just trust God. God, if this is your will, you're going to do it. But if not, they're still healed. If you don't do it, they still are going to be healed because they're going to be with you. We have hope that those who have perished with Christ are going to be with him in this afterlife. As we will meet them face to face again, I will get to see my mom again because she is with the Lord Jesus Christ right now. But guess what? Christ still heals in the same way that he did in the New Testament, that he did in the Old Testament. Jesus still is the same miracle worker. He's still the same miracle worker that wants to do that. And and sometimes our conservativeness is like, I don't know if that is true or I don't know if that's real. Well, let me share a couple scriptures with you tonight just to um, solidify that. Turn over to James chapter 5. Real quick, we're just going to kind of fly through these real fast. James chapter 5, verse 14. Bible says, Is anyone among you sick? Verse 14. Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him or her, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. God is, is, is saying through, through James here is saying, hey, if you are, this is kind of a practice in the church. And this is a practice that we hold in this church today. If you are sick. If you are in need of of healing and you're asking God to heal you, you can come to the elders, to the pastors of this church and say, I'm sick, I need need God to heal me. And and the anointing of the oil that is really just a representation of the Holy Spirit coming upon you or coming in you, the, 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 the healing hand of God coming over your life. And we trust together, God, if it is your will, you're going to heal this person. You know, but uh, the, the thing that I think the struggle is with healing is that we have this kind of like doubt in the back of our minds. And the doubt is, but it's probably not your will. Like, God, if you want to heal this person, I know you will, but you're probably not going to do it. So would you do something else then? Would you do these kind of things? But man, how, how liberating would it be and how amazing would it be to be able to just go, God, I know you can do it. God, you can heal this person. You will heal this person because even if not in this moment, you will in the afterlife. And so I'm praying in faith and I trust that you have the power to do it. Oh man, if we could have that kind of faith and see what God would do when we would come. And if we have that faith of saying, you know what, I'm sick, but I know God can heal me. You know what, I'm sick. Maybe it even is, it's just the flu or something like that. And starting with just trusting God with something as simple as that. God, I have the flu, but I know you can heal me. I know you can touch my life right now. And, and praying that even amongst ourselves or going to the pastors and elders and saying, would you anoint me with oil? And I, I just want to trust that God is going to heal me and praying for that healing. Mark chapter 16, flip to the left, Mark chapter 16. So one, he will, you can go to the pastors and elders to receive prayer. And God works through that to heal people through prayer and through the anointing of oil. Mark chapter 16. This is the Great Commission. This is what he's calling his disciples to go and do. In Mark 16, verse 17, it says, And these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. Check this out. Let me read this one more time. These These signs will follow those... These signs will follow those who believe in my name. This is talking to the Christian. This is not talking to the super spiritual and highly favored and blessed. This is talking to the person that puts their trust and faith in Jesus. He says he's given them the power to do these things. I lost my place. There it is. And these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons 
They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Like this is a practice that God is calling even Christians to do, to pray for one another. Not just to go to the, just to the elders and pastors and to get anointed with oil, but this is the call of the church. Go pray for people that are sick. Your, your grandfather or your mother or your sibling that is in the hospital, a coworker that is in the hospital, to just go to them and say, hey, I want to pray for you. I believe God has the power to, to, to touch your life. I wanna, I, can I pray for you? Can I pray for healing over your life? It, maybe it's a coworker that's like, man, I just feel so sick today. I, have, I, I just I had a, woke up with a fever or something like that and going, hey, can I pray for you? Can I pray? This is the, the, the practice of a Christian that he's called you to do. You can go out and lay hands on people, pray for people that God would, would heal them. Why does he call us to do that? We'll go to 1 Corinthians 12, verse 9. 1 Corinthians 12, hang over to, uh, hang over to the right. A few sections over to the right. You guys still with me? Stephen is, and one other person went, "Mm." everybody else is not. I'm on page 986. I don't know what page it is in your Bible, but it's 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. Paul is talking about the church, the body of Christ. He's talking about um, there's, there's a thing that God does for the church and for the body of Christ. He gives them spiritual gifts. They're gifts only the Spirit can give out. They're not gifts that you can, to, can learn and can you know, go to school for and, and say, well, I got this spiritual gift. This is a gift that, that God gives himself. This is his gift to give. These spiritual gifts that he gives to every single Christian, and, but it's different. There's um, diversity in the, in the body of Christ. There's all these different gifts that he gives. And in verse 9, one of those things, he says, to another faith by the same spirit, verse, um, I'm sorry, verse 9, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same spirit. Now, this is a controversial one, and I know I, I, I don't want to go into all of this because we don't have enough time to go into this, but love to talk to you if you're interested afterwards or, or any time. But um, this is a controversial one because there's a lot of people that take this and go, this, that, that's me. And we've seen those kind of people, right, that go around and they say, I have the gift of healing. I have the gift of healing, so they go around and they start slaying people in the spirit. And, uh, you know, they, and maybe you've seen it online where they're slapping people across the forehead and they fall down, they get up, and they're, I'm healed. And uh, um, the reality is, is that if you had the gift of healing, the gift of healing, why don't you go into the hospital, go into every single room, and just go, healed, next room, healed, next room healed and we wouldn't have a need for hospitals anymore and notice even in in uh, John chapter 5 again going back to John chapter 5 there was a multitude of people that were sick there was a multitude of people that were sick that were looking for healing but Christ healed one why he healed that person and not the rest of people I don't know but the reality is is that there's moments In life, there's moments in this lifetime with Christians, with people, that God will heal somebody. And it's not that that person is better than anybody else, but it is just the sovereignty of God. It is just the will of God for some reason. He is choosing for his glory and to to make his glory known to heal that person. The reality is is that we all are going to be healed, but in that moment, there's many people that are sick, but he says, I'm going to heal that person. And that's why in in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 9, why it says the gifts, there's plural, the gifts of healings. Because nobody has just the gift. It is a manifestation of the Spirit for a moment. For some reason, I'm going to heal that person. For some reason, I'm going to manifest my spirit into this Christian to heal this person. And it's not the person doing the healing, but God is just working that gift through the person. as Through the laying on of hands or through a pastor or elder who's, who's praying over somebody. And last but not least... 1 Timothy um, chapter 5, verse 23. You can jot this down. It's a really quick um, uh, scripture here. 1 Timothy, I'm going to just hit two, two real quick ones. 1 Timothy 5, verse 23 says, No longer drink, this is Paul telling Timothy this, No longer drink only water, but use a little wine for your stomach's sake and your frequent infirmities. And in Luke 10, verse 34 
This is a parable that Jesus is giving, and, uh, and you see this, this man in this parable do something really interesting to, to someone who is in need. Luke 10, chapter 34 says, so when he went to him, this, uh, the good Samaritan, when he went to him, it's the parable of the good Samaritan. So when he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And the reality is, is that God has brought so many amazing medical advances to help heal people, to help people like things like you know, bottled up elderberry. I don't know how it works, but apparently it's not witchcraft. Apparently it's, it's natural. But, you know, things like that, that God is, has advanced the, had advanced the um, uh, medical departments to do these amazing things, to provide these amazing uh, resources to people that are in need, people that are hurting, chemotherapy for people that are going through cancer, whatever the case is, all of these amazing things that the medical uh, departments have done to help people and God can even use that. Whatever the case is, man, if we could take that step of faith and go, God, I believe you can do this. You are a healing God. You are a miracle worker. I believe you can heal me spiritually. I believe you can heal me physically, and I'm going to trust you to do that. And God, if, you're, if you don't choose to heal me in that way, I know that one day I'm going to see you with not a, a single pain in my body, with not a single tear in my eye, I'm going to see you with my resurrected body, my perfect body that you've given to me to be with you forever in heaven. Do we still believe in his healing power? Man, if we do, we should walk in it. We should walk in it just as the man rose, uh, rised up from, from the ground, from his infirmity, took up his bed and walked and said, Christ healed me. Christ healed me and he can do the same for you. Amen. God, thank you so much for your word, Lord. I just pray that you would just instill it within our hearts, God. It's so easy to just say the words. It's so easy to just sing the worship songs. But God, would you actually manifest it in our lives? Would you actually do it in and through our lives? God, would we allow you to do it? Sometimes, Lord, we just, our doubt or our fears get in the way. God, I know of so many experiences or times in my life, Lord, where I let my fear get in the way. And I, and I believe, Lord, I missed out on the miracle. I can remember, Lord, so many, so many different times when I felt the prompting of the Holy Spirit to do something, to rise up, take up my bed and walk. And yet I, I, I stumbled in my fear. I stumbled in my doubt and I thought, it's, it's, that's not for me. He's not calling, you're not calling me to do that. I missed out on the miracle. God, help us not to miss out on the miracles. Lord, you are a miracle worker. Lord, and you are a promise keeper. If you've called us to practice it, Lord, you're going to keep your promise to do those things through us. To tell us to, to take that step of faith and to not be there, Lord, that's not the kind of God you are. When you call us to take that step of faith like a child would trust his father to run into his arms in the, in the middle of a pool, Lord, we just want to, to take that step, that leap of faith, and just, just to trust that you're going to catch us. To simply just trust again. To stop letting the, the doubts and the arguments and the, all the reasoning behind why it shouldn't work get in the way. But just to simply trust you again. Lord, I want to do that personally, Lord. I want to simply just trust in your miracle working. Lord, that you provide the way, that you are the truth, that you are the life. Help me, Lord, in my own life personally, God, to just go deeper, to trust you better, to deepen my faith, Lord. And I pray for my brothers and sisters here tonight as well, Lord, if you're calling them to take that step of faith, Lord, Lord, that you'd make it clear in their lives, Lord, what that step is. God, I can't tell them, their spouse can't tell them, their kids can't tell them, their parents can't tell them. Lord, only you can share what your plan and purpose is in, in their life. And so I pray that they would be sensitive to your, your voice, Lord. A, a sheep knows their shepherd's voice. And so I pray, God, that they would hear your still, small voice, Lord, and that they would take that step of faith, trusting you to do great things in and through their life. 
Lord, and, and just in this time, Lord, I feel, um, Lord, you want to make people well right now. I just trust, Lord, that you want to, it would be foolish for us to, to walk away from this, not even just giving someone a chance to reach out to you and ask for that healing. Lord, you're calling them. You're saying, do you want to be made well? And I just pray, Lord, that tonight we would just reach out to your healing hand and see the healing happen in our lives, Lord, spiritually, physically, whatever you're, you're, you're wanting to do in our lives. So tonight, with our heads bowed and our eyes closed, I'm not going to have people come forward or anything. I just want to give you the opportunity to just reach out to the Lord. If you are in need of healing, maybe it's spiritual, maybe it is physical, but you just need a healing touch from the Lord that you'd reach out tonight. That you'd reach out your hand tonight to, to, to the Lord. It's not to me. You're not reaching out to me because I can do nothing for you. I can pray for you. That's about it. But it's Christ who brings that healing. And so just tonight, if that is you, Keep your hand up. Just reach out to that healing hand of God. His hand is out. His hand is reaching out for you right now, asking, "Do you want to be made well?" And just to take that step of faith to raise your hand and say, "God, please, please heal me." My hand's with you. To be able to say in humility, "I need you, God. I need you to heal this part of my life." Raising up your hand saying, I trust you can do it, God. I trust you can heal me. And my hand being raised is that is me taking that step of faith and trusting you. God, my hand is raised with my brothers and sisters here tonight, Lord. And Lord, each and every one of us, God, I, I, I know could, could t examine our lives and see the areas that we need healing. To see the areas that we need purification. And I know that some of us in here, Lord, are, are just going through it. Spiritually, they're just battling. Emotionally, they're just battling. God, circumstances in their life, they're just struggling with. And I pray, God, as they raise their hand to you, Lord, that you would show your miracle power. That you would show your healing power, Lord, and that you would do the impossible, that you would work the miracle in their life. And for those raising their hands, Lord, for physical healing, God, there's something that is just causing them pain and discomfort. Maybe it is um, a test that they've gotten back that is positive. Maybe it's um, just something they've been battling with since birth. Maybe even it's something as simple as an, as, as an allergy that, that is just controlling their life. I pray, Lord, that, Lord, you are the one that can heal them from it. God, that you would just heal them, Lord, from whatever infirmity that they have and that they're struggling with, God. Show your power in their life and heal them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, use maybe, a, a, uh, maybe it is a, um, a doctor or a medical facility or a department, Lord, that is um, God. A great plan that, that it seems like is just straight from you, God, that they would trust, Lord, maybe you're, tr you're wanting to heal them through that. But God, ultimately, our lives are in your hands. And Lord, you, are, you promise that healing to every single one of us, that we are going to rise from the dead and be with you forever. So God, whatever you have planned for our lives, we trust you. Our lives are in your hands, Lord. We thank you, God, for being that miracle worker, that promise keeper. Lord, I just pray that you would just bring comfort and strength to my brothers and sisters tonight, Lord. Thank you for this time, Lord. And as we go to the communion table, just pray, Lord, that you would remind us, God, that there was a healing that happened because of your stripes. You say in Isaiah that by my stripes, you are healed. There was that spiritual, physical, we are going to rise from the dead as you died and rose again, Lord. There is a great promise in that, that you've called your people to, that they're going to do the same thing. One day they will rise again. There is a, a healing, a spiritual healing, a rebirth that happens because of your stripes. Lord, remind us of that tonight as we take communion. In Jesus' name, amen.